Hi, this is international publicist Michelle Tennant Nicholson, and I am here with my nephew, you can see right there, Kurt Tennant, and Hal Jackson, that's him, and Hal is with laurelnest.com, and this week my nephew is with me, actually getting his first job experiences, and right now what we're doing is sewing together a yurt, which is a Mongolian teepee. And Hal is here in Western North Carolina where I live and he has made a business for himself actually making these Mongolian teepees for people. And what we're doing right now is sewing the seams of the teepee so it's uh, weaterproof. This is the final seam uh, that are two halves of the yurt. And if you pictured the two halves of a donut like that, we cut a triangle out of both sides of these and so instead of it being a flat donut, when you sew those two halves together like that, it turns out to make a fustrum, which is a cone without a top on it. Nice. And so that's what we're doing. This is half of an 18-foot yurt here and half of an 18-foot yurt roof. This is just the roof part. We did build a wall today too, but um, so we're just actually making that final connection after we've cut all our circles out and cut our dome out. And then we'll go through and, and put a, bal a balance around the whole thing. And so. Nice. And so, You're using a double needle machine and putting a lap belt seam in. I'm going to walk around here so you guys can get a little closer look. Yeah, you can look down the barrel even. See down through there? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. I'm making sure that it stays in that folder all the way and doesn't get over rolled or under rolled in that folder. And you, how you actually get orders online and everything from people, don't you? You're like just yeah, kind of... we ship all over the country. I've got a lot of people want me to ship all over the world, but I don't think it's very sustainable. And it's, it's so much to, for the customs and the shipping and the crating I, that I kind of just... I'm so busy now that I've just been taking the... Domestic orders. orders. Yeah. yeah. But Understood. I try hard to encourage the people who are buying, like in California and stuff, to make their own wood parts because they've got access to such good wood out there yes. and it, we don't have to ship it all the way across the country and I've got a book that tells them how to make every part exactly with all the drill bit sizes and everything. But this customer is actually on a mountaintop over here in Western North Carolina. Uh, there's a lady and uh, a man that have been married for a while that they bought some land a long time ago, but maybe in the 70s. And they've always wanted to put something up there, but they don't want to build a house, and it's this bad road to get up there. But they've always wanted to go and just hang out on their property, and so they're just kind of... Nice. Plus, 90 percent of the people who buy them from me live in them full-time residential structures, where they uh, permit them sometimes, and all of that. The yurt itself is a temporary structure, but it has to be put on a platform of some kind, and that usually falls in with being... Am I, am I distracting you? No, Should I leave you alone? Because we can walk outside in just a second. I want to show everybody, too, what a finished year it looks like. I'm going to walk around from this side. And as you can see, having two people to get this thing through the machine is imperative. And so we've been working on stuff all day. Kurt, what did you learn today? Like the one, the one most memorable thing that you've learned today. Mm. And I learned a lot, but maybe just the highlight. Uh, that the original Mongolian yurts were made out of um, what was it? Wool from she from sheep or just animals? Yeah, felted wool from felted sheep wool. or goat, I guess yeah. sometimes too. And yeah. uh, what was the process that you, they? Well, wool has a natural like uh, hooks on it, so. If you, if you slap it, you know, like they take a stick and slap it down a bunch of times and it kind of forces it to go together and it starts to interlock where it doesn't want to come apart. Mm -hmm. Then if you get it wet and let it dry in the sun, just like putting it in the dryer, it shrinks up and becomes felted wool. 
where it's all stuck together and real tight and thick too, like thicker than it would be if it was laid out flat. And they do all kinds of stuff. They drag it across the dirt, and I don't know exactly what, what they do, but they felt their own wool. And, and, and you're a self-made man because you really just took this on as a hobby one time, just kind of curious about it, and now you're just doing it. That's just an incredible story. Yeah, I built myself one and lived in it for a few years. And then somebody said, oh, you know how to build yurts. And I was like, not really. I built one and <laughs> we, we could try it again. I, know, I learned a couple things and we tried it and did a little different. And then we tried another one, did it a little different. And then yeah. after a while, I was like, well, it's coming along pretty good. We got a pretty good product and maybe we should make a company. And then that got crazy. You know, making a company is never easy. And I never, I didn't know much about building companies, even though I went, graduated in business management, I never built a company, you know, websites and all of that and years of not having very many sales and finally, you know, and having to dump money in just to keep the thing right. open and keep a building and keep a presence and an 800 number and all of that stuff you have to do just to even get started. And so um, my wife's parents were basically the key and keeping us afloat until we got to where we could support ourselves. Oh, I like so having now, the family involvement now, there. Now we're paying them back and we're <laughs> able, to, able to make a little money and pay them back. So. Nice. See, Kurt? It's all about the family. In the family! And my own thing. family actually has been very supportive in just like small time loans whenever, you know, problems would happen and just yeah. helping us balance out and jumping in and help me sew when they need to. You know, they're, they're great too. But. Well, I'm going to walk out here and then actually just show people what a yurt, you know, a finished yurt actually looks like. Because I bet they, somebody's going to trip on this YouTube video, Hal, and they're going to be like, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. So... Here's just a few structures. I probably should shoot my kitchen, which is uh, had a cover, a new cover put on recently, right over here. Okay. We can even go upstairs and shoot inside. Oh, right up in here? Uh, go the other way, right around this corner. Okay. There's the kitchen with the wood stove and all of that. Right through here? Yeah, it has real windows on it, but you can't see it. Go the other way, no, go the back far one over there. Okay. Yeah, that's more what they look like in the other new covers. The other one's covers the over here. Yeah. In fact, you can walk in there. And... What? Well, I, I mean, I don't want to be all nosy and stuff, but if you oh, want yeah, me to walk in there, I can. Come on in. I want to show you something. Okay. We're at 7 minutes and 32 seconds, and people hate videos longer than 10 minutes. So we got 3 yeah. minutes to make an impression. Yeah. <laughs> Start talking like an auctioneer. Right, exactly. So we did all the, all this uh, laurel comes off our property when we clear a spot for a yurt. And so we may use the laurels and the rhododendrons to make things and then make like spider web railings and oh, things. that's cool. This is our community kitchen. Oh, wow. Yeah. We just recently got the windows from Habitat for Humanity and put them in here and... Well, you know, my mother on my land, so we've got some, uh, you can't put uh, a camper or whatever, right? We can't, uh -huh. but we could do other buildings. Uh -huh. And I bet we could put something like this for my mother, like Is a little mother-in-law wing. Do they have a no, a no temporary structure clause or something like that? Or No, it's just you can't do those, size like an airstream. You, you just can't, can't roll one in. Right, you roll can't one. roll one in, but you yeah. can put whatever building you want on your own property. Okay, yeah, she could probably do it then. How much is realistic? Like, do you need to set aside for something like this? Um, this one right here is 22 feet in diameter, and you probably wouldn't get out any less than 10 grand. And that's not what you would pay me. That's what you would pay for your flooring and your your uh, uh, platform to set it on and insulation and all these other things. But you wouldn't get away any cheaper than 10 grand. And so, and then from start to finish, then maybe 10, 20 grand or 15 grand? No, that, that's, that's, it, probably, that's probably a good really? part of the cost. Maybe, you know, when you start adding... Uh, Plumbing, electrical, all your appliances, things like that. Then you're going to get up, you know, 15, 20 grand. I really appreciate you, yeah. like, taking on Kurt and teaching him stuff today. Yeah, he was very helpful. Sweet. He had fun today.